Well, aloha, everyone. Uh, here we are, Wednesday, over the hump day here in Hawaii. Um, my name is Mitch Ewan. I'm your host today for Hawaii, the state of uh, clean energy. Um, this is hosted by the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and also the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, where I am the hydrogen systems program manager. So today we're going to be talking about zero emission buses uh, for the Big Island. And my little byline is, yes, can. Is that a friend of mine on the Big Island, Richard Ha, who I'm sure many of you know, has two types of people. There's the no cans. In other words, no can do. I can't do it. I'm not even going to try to do it. And then there's the other people like us that are called, we like to call ourselves yes cans, meaning, yes, there's problems and there's challenges, but we can and we're going to do it. So that's why I'm going to talk to you today about zero emission buses for the Big Island. It's a concept that we're just uh, working on and developing it. And I want to give you uh, the latest uh, ideas we have. And also, at any time you want, uh, send us an email or whatever and let me know what your thoughts are. So can we have that first slide up, please? So I'm focused on uh, zero emission buses. Um, these are uh, buses that give off no uh, pollutants. Um, they can be either a battery electric bus or they can be a hydrogen fuel cell electric bus. There's two kinds of electric buses. Um, so let's go to the next slide, please. So what are the objectives? So obviously the first objective is to transport people to their jobs and to the services they need, like going to the doctor, going to the grocery store. And uh, do that by operating a fleet of zero emission buses uh, because, you know, they need, uh, we all need access to the convenience and affordable mobility. In other words, mobility means you can, it's convenient for you to go down the corner to the bus stop and there's going to be a bus that will actually arrive on time and pick you up and take you to where you need to go. We have a tremendous opportunity on the big island um, to leapfrog technology to hydrogen-fueled zero-emission buses or battery electric buses. Why do I say we have that uh, opportunity? It's because right now, out of a fleet of 65 diesel buses on the Big Island, we only have 13 or 14, maybe it's a little bit more now as they uh, change out some engines, but we only have 13 or 14 buses actually in the fleet that are operational. Um, so we don't have a um, legacy system that we have to replicate. And, and those buses actually are, are the ones that are still left, are, they're pretty old as well. They're, I think the average age is about 12 years old, which means they're almost at the end of their useful life. So how do they fill the gap right now? They've, they're, they're the, the MTA, the Helion bus, is, is renting buses from various bus companies to fill in the gap. So the point is that I'm trying to make is that without a legacy system, we can look at what's the best technology out there if we're going to buy a whole new fleet of buses. And that, in my opinion, should be zero emission buses, whether they be battery electric buses or fuel cell or hydrogen electric buses. So next slide, please. So I'm going to talk a little bit about this uh, concept. Um, it's not novel necessarily, but what I want to show you is the, a, a projected or a concept bus system. I'm going to start off with the lowest common denominator, like, that's the subdivisions. You'll see, say, for example, at the bottom of the slide, the ones that are numbered one. Well, the idea is to have circulator buses um, operating in the subdivision that can pick up people near, near their house and then take them to a main bus route, which is like that big uh, ellipse you see uh, with the two-way arrows. So right now, for example, in the Pune district and some of those big subdivisions, you know, they have to walk or get from their house to the main bus line, and it, it's quite a long way. It can be up to four or five miles, I'm told. And uh, even the kids, you know, going to school have to walk miles and miles and miles unless they can get a ride with mom and dad. Uh, to the school. So the idea is to have shuttle buses like you see at the airport, uh, either battery electric or fuel cell electric buses that 
just do a little circuit around the subdivision all day long and just pick up people and take them to the main, uh, the main bus stop. And then the second element, like in a larger place like Hilo or in Kailua Kona, you'd have what we call city buses, basically a 40-foot uh, city bus that does its route in the city and uh, you know, a lot of stop and go. And it's continually circulating as well. It's a bigger bus because there's more people. So you can fill it up with 40 people. Um, also in Hilo is the main bus depot, brand new facility, uh, really awesome. I went to uh, see it about a month ago and it is top, li top line. Um, huge improvement over what they used to have, um, which was really just a base yard. Uh, I mean, it was pretty bad, but now they've got a very modern facility. Looks great. They've got a wash station for the buses. Um, nice offices, uh, great uh, facilities for the, uh, the maintenance people and for the people that are running the, the uh, system. And then um, the recent uh, new bus strategy is to have a second uh, depot or facility over in Kailua Kona. Right now there is none. So all the buses generally have to go back to you know, the home base, which is in Hilo, which is not very efficient. So the idea that was pulled out of this report, well, let's build another satellite, a satellite depot over in Kailua Kona so that we can really improve the bus service on the west side of the island. So a lot of folks out there, there is pretty sparse on the bus side, but we need to do better for them. So these uh, larger buses can either go, um, you know, just rotate around inside the actual town or they could go intertown, like from, for example, from Kailua Kona over to Waimea, or some other small town, which isn't too far, but would be very convenient if you had a larger bus to take more people back and forth. And then finally, looking at the inner city bus, you'll see the picture there, a little cartoon of a double-decker bus, which currently runs between uh, they don't actually have one, I think, that's on the road right now, but driving from Hilo, delivering people from Hilo over to Kailua Kona to the main hotels and then back again at night over the saddle road, which for a battery electric bus is very challenging because of the long, steep grades. And that's where a fuel cell electric bus really comes into its own because it's not affected by those long grades. It can handle that. So that's the uh, overall concept. And then also shown on there is where, where do we, if in, in the hydrogen case, I mean, uh, where do we get the hydrogen from? So there's many candidates for hydrogen. So one is obviously the geothermal plant, which is a nice form of energy because it produces electricity 24 seven, 24 hours, seven days a week and steady state. And then other, uh, uh, hydrogen sources are from sun, the wind, and from uh, waste treatment plants. But my next slide will uh, talk a little bit more about that in depth. So I think I'm ready for the next slide. So here's a concept of, okay, in the case of the hydrogen uh, uh, fuel cell electric bus, so where do we get our hydrogen from? So I already talked about ge Pune Geothermal. Uh, it's projected to be online by the end of this year. Um, and I've already personally done a study there, um, and it's uh, a very good source of uh, energy. And uh, I've already done, gone through an EA, not totally completed it yet, but uh, we're a long way along the line. We're not starting from a clean sheet of paper. And the idea there would be to truck the hydrogen from the geothermal plant to the Hilo main depot. Uh, another one that's uh, sprung up recently, uh, a candidate, is the West Hawaii Landfill, which is uh, just uh, it's a fairly new landfill and has a variety of energy sources in it. So if, instead of looking at a landfill as just a place you know, full of garbage, um, really we need to be looking at it as a place or, or a capability that's full of energy. And how do we extract the energy out of all that, what we today call waste and, and make it an asset. So for example, 
the landfill produces methane, biomethane, and you capture that. Right now it's being captured and flared, but instead of flaring it off, just burning it off, we can use that to uh, make electricity and or directly uh, make hydrogen out of it. And then it has all the other um, solid waste that can be burned or gasified uh, to make uh, a hot gas, which can also be used to make electricity, and then that could run an electrolyzer, which then you use to make your hydrogen. So, and that's uh, located near Kailua Kona. Um, I even thought about at one some point maybe we could look at basing the buses there so that we don't have to transport hydrogen from the landfill to wherever that satellite depot is. We have it co-located with the buses. So we don't have to incur the cost of, and, and, and both in terms of uh, people and equipment to truck it five or six miles. To me, that makes a lot of sense. And then uh, you see a trash truck, haul this is a Riley Sato's idea. Awesome idea, <laughs> never thought about it. You know, we can also truck hydrogen from the West Hawaii landfill over to the Hilo side. And one of the ideas is like right now they're running up to 15 large heavy duty trucks uh, a day from Hilo delivering trash to the West Hawaii landfill. Why not hook up a hydrogen trailer uh, to that uh, truck on its way back and haul that over to the Hilo side. And while we're at it, why don't we convert those trucks over to uh, hydrogen electric vehicle zero emission trucks. Um, in my mind, that makes a lot of sense. And then other, um, other uh, sources, uh, Lalamilo um, makes a lot of, uh, there's a lot of beautiful wind resource at Lalamilo. We could add additional dedicated wind turbines, uh, once again, to make hydrogen. And you could you know, put it in a trailer and take it to the West Hawaii landfill where we would conceptually have a fueling station there. I show, um, you know, a, um, the sun a PV array. I, I just pointed out Waimea, but it could be anywhere. Same with the wind. Anywhere you have a good wind resource, you could be making hydrogen. And you put it into trailers, and then you transport it to where you, you need it to go. So next slide, please. Oh, hang on. One thing is all these heavy duty vehicles, and I'll talk about it more, will have an export power unit. What does that mean? It means that in addition to being on the road and hauling things, they can be used to uh, provide power for critical loads, and I, I have more to talk about that. Next slide. I think we're coming up to a break, but let me just go through this slide first, and then we'll cut to a break. So. So this is the first Helion zero emission bus uh, in Hawaii. Uh, this is currently on Oahu, brand new bus. It's not a used bus that's been converted. It, we bought a brand new bus, um, El Dorado. It's a 29 passenger bus. Um, and what we've done is we took out the uh, gasoline engine that was in it and we've converted it over to a fuel cell electric bus. That was done by U.S. Hybrid, who've been in Hawaii for 20 years, and they have a small operation here. And currently the bus is at their facility on Oahu, and they're fitting an air conditioning system into it. Uh, air conditioning system on a fuel cell electric or an electric bus does not run off an engine like it does on a regular bus. So you have to put in an electric drive system uh, to run uh, the air conditioner. These two, this bus is fully ADA compliant with wheelchair lift and two spots for wheelchairs. Um, the overall uh, size of the uh, drivetrain is 200 kilowatts. It's got a 200 mile range. And we just upgraded the fuel cell from a 30 kilowatt to a 40 kilowatt fuel cell using the US hybrid fuel cell. These are uh, all electric vehicle, all uh, fuel cell electric vehicles have a battery. You want that to capture uh, regenerative braking instead of using your brakes, you use your electric motor as a generator. And um, this bus carries about equivalent of about 40 gallons of uh, gasoline if you were running an internal combustion engine. Give it the range of 200 miles. 
So we're going to cut to a break right now, and uh, we'll go on uh, as soon as the break is over. So see you in a minute or so. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Aloha and welcome to At The Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. I'm live at five every Wednesday where we have entertaining and educational conversations that are real and relevant, both here in Hawaii and across the globe. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Well, we're back from our break, and um, I'm going to carry on with my dialogue. If we can uh, bump up the next slide. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, the export power system. So <clears throat> what I did is, uh, what we did is we uh, backfitted or installed a export power unit on this uh, MTA or the Helion bus. Um, and the reason we did that is uh, we wanted to leverage the uh, energy that we store on this bus to be able to provide a critical load or power to civil defense when there's an emergency. If the grid goes down because of a hurricane, a tsunami hits, or whatever kind of you know, th uh, event hits Hawaii that knocks out our electrical system, we still have to keep critical loads uh, Powered. So what do I mean by a critical load? Well, that could be like a communication system, uh, cell phone towers. It can be like refrigerators at your local CVS or drugstore, which has um, medicines that will spoil unless they're kept cool. So we can bring the bus in, plug it in, and keep that refrigerator going. We can use it to clear trees because you can export the power to a uh, Electric chainsaw, for example, and uh, you're so you can clear the roads, um, assuming that you may not be able to get gasoline uh, because you know all most gas stations don't have a backup power system to keep their pumps going. So this unit, uh, you can see uh, the, in, in the diagram on the right, there's a little hydrogen tank that's just part of the, the bus's uh, storage of uh, hydrogen, and you can see there's uh, actual plugs. This is not the finished product. It's not, it doesn't look like that on the bus. All you see is a, a panel where you can plug in uh, these uh, electric appliances. So it can, the key point is it can also provide that power for up to 32 hours. I mean, think about that. There's enough power on that bus, enough energy on that bus to provide 10 kilowatts for 32 hours. Um, 110, 220 volt AC, standalone operation, Overall efficiency is about 94%. And here's a key point. You can refill the bus in about 15 minutes and you get another 30 hours. So instead of looking at your bus system, as, or the bus is just a bus, it's not. It's a portable power energy unit so that in a disaster, you can take your whole fleet, in the case of the Big Island, uh, 65 buses, and, and spread that around the island to those critical sources where you actually need to have standby power. So my understanding is uh, civil defense really like this. Uh, and then you, when you look at the cost of your bus, there is a, a premium to be paid for a battery electric or a, or a fuel cell electric bus or a hydrogen electric bus. But what's the value? Proposition: What's the value of being able to power these critical loads in an emergency? So it's more than just a bus. And that's the point, uh, that's a key point I want to make. This is an investment in resilience. We're all talking about resilience and being able to keep going under really uh, bad conditions. So this is what, this gives you that capability of doing that. So it's a great, it's an investment, not only in just transportation, but in, in keeping people safe and potentially even saving lives in, in these emergencies. Next slide, please. 
You'll be happy to know this is my final slide. Um, so when you have a, uh, in this case, a hydrogen electric bus, you have to find a source of hydrogen to fill it. So we have built a hydrogen station at the Nelha facility beside the Kona airport, and this is an aerial view of it. Uh, we're in the final stages of commissioning this. Uh, so in the, just to point out a few of the features, so you see that or there's a 40-foot shipping container in the background at the edge with a, the, the green stripe along the bottom. So that's where we generate hydrogen or produce hydrogen and compress it. And then we deliver it. Uh, what's missing is uh, you'll see the two canopies on the left-hand side of the picture. Those are bays where we have, uh, we have up to three hydrogen trailers that we've uh, purchased. Uh, the first one is actually delivered now and is sitting in the first bay. And we're waiting to commission that. Uh, we've got some spare parts that have to be uh, procured and brought in from the, uh, the mainland. And then on the upper right-hand corner of the, uh, of the uh, picture, you see the little blue um, um, device, and that's a dispenser. It looks just like any dispenser at any gas station, and it has a hose and the whole nine yards. Totally automated system. We've taken the man out of the loop. So the driver, it's just like going to a 7-Eleven. Your driver can drive in, park the bus at the appropriate spot, hook up the hose, which looks exactly like a gasoline hose, except it's got a, uh, a gas-tight connection, and hit a button on the, uh, on the screen, on the little computer screen, and then the computer takes over and fills the bus. The first thing it does is it puts a little puff of pressure into the line and holds that for about 10 seconds to make sure that there's no hydrogen leak, that the, it actually does have a gas tight fitting. If it says, uh, if it's okay, then it continues on filling up to another level of pressure, stops and uh, monitors the whole situation. And then if it's still okay, then it continues on and completes the fill and then shuts down automatically. And all the driver has to do is disconnect it and hang it up. So, like I said, we've, we've totally automated the system. We've made it really simple to use and the same experience for people as if they were filling their car at the, at the corner gas station. Um, other features are the, um, uh, uh, the canopies you see that keeps the, uh, the systems out of the weather. So we have a canopy over the, uh, over the uh, fueling dispenser. And we also have canopies over the connections. We have interfaces between the, uh, between the trailer and where they actually are able to fill up with the hydrogen. So what you see there is a nice simple patch of concrete, a concrete pad. But let me tell you that underneath that pad is a whole system of hydrogen lines going this way and that way, um, a lot of grounding. Um, that's one of the things uh, for safety. If you go to your local gas station, you see you always park your car. There may be asphalt out in the parking lot, but there's always concrete where you actually put your car, and that's all part of the safety of reducing static electricity. And then you see the fence around there. Every single strand of wire is also grounded, and that's not just because it's a hydrogen station. I mean, the airport, uh, airport fencing is, uh, was assured by our electrical contractor is the same way. So a couple of shout outs. I'd just like to shout out to Nan Construction, who did all the, uh, all the site work, did an awesome job. And I'd also like to shout out to our landlord, which is uh, Nelha, which is part of DBED. They have been great, uh, very supportive. In fact, they managed the project for us on our behalf. We just gave them a lot of money, and then they did everything. Alex Leonard, super guy, detail-oriented. Did, a, did a, a masterful job at it. So I'm down to my uh, final uh, few minutes on this show. So I'd just like to um, just encapsulate all this by saying, you know, the, the station at Nelha is meant to, it's, it's not like a commercial station. I mean, you can't just come in and fill up your car or any bus. You know, it's a demonstration and a pilot project. It's to show the... Uh, residents of the Big Island, how this whole system works, to show them that we do it in a safe way, um, that it's, uh, and, and to demonstrate to the bus company, we will actually be filling the Helion bus there, that, that MTA bus. 
um, for at least up to two years, um, uh, which uh, HNEI is funding. Just to get everybody uh, used to it, riding drives, I mean, once you ride it, you'll love it. <laughs> so, so that's the uh, story of uh, zero emission uh, buses for the Big Island. So we will bring you updates as we go along. I think the next big event will be when the bus is finally delivered to the Big Island. Um, and we want to make sure everything's working before we roll it out. Uh, as my boss said when I first took this job, he says, Mitch, we don't tell people what we're going to do. We tell them what we've done. And I think that's a very good way to go. So when we know it's working and we can prove it's working is when we're going to actually roll it out. So thank you, everybody. And I'll see you uh, next Wednesday. So aloha.